At this time, we're going to get ready to receive our tithes and offerings. So ushers, if you could please prepare for that. And uh, hopefully everybody had a great New Year's Eve celebration, a New Year's celebration with your family and friends. And I don't know about you, but when you look back at 2018, 2018 for some of us was pretty crazy. Uh, some of you might not know, but I'm going to uh, drop the bomb, apparently, according to my wife. Uh, we found out in December that uh, we were expecting another child. And so uh, it was pretty, it was, we, were, we were all excited, slash nervous, slash scared, slash going crazy. And then the last day of 2018, we went to the doctors and we did an ultrasound. And the doctor went, uh, well, there's one baby and there's the other one. <laughs> I was like, whoa, my, my jaw literally hit the floor. Uh, and so it was so crazy because, because everyone, we're excited and all of a sudden I started thinking about it. I was like, whoa, 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 wait, wait, wait. That means this and that means that. And one of the things that actually came to my mind was our finances. And it was so amazing is that as soon as I thought of that, the Lord just spoke and he said, listen, I'm in charge of your finances. Although you're surprised of what happened, it wasn't a surprise to me because I'm always faithful. And the reason why I share that is because for some of us, as we enter this new year, we might be thinking, I don't know how we can do this. I don't know how I can do that. But giving our tithes and our offerings is just another reminder of how faithful our God is. That even when we are not, he always remains faithful. Now, you might be visiting us for the very first time and if that's you, we ask that you don't feel obligated to give this morning. In fact, receive this service to help you in your walk with the Lord. Or maybe you're visiting us from another church, and we want to encourage you to give wherever you regularly attend church services. But if New Hope Church is where you call home, would you know that no matter what surprises may come our way, He is always faithful. And in an act of faithfulness, that's why we give our tithes and offerings. Would you bow your heads with me as we pray for our tithes and offerings this morning? Lord, we come before you this morning, Lord, and we just thank you so much for all the things you did in 2018 and for all the things you're going to do in 2019 and beyond. And Lord, this morning as we, as we give you our tithes and offerings, Lord, we do so knowing that you are always faithful. That Lord, when we give it to you, you take it and you turn it into blessings, not just for us, but for others, Lord. Because your heart is always that more and more people would come to receive you as their Lord and Savior. And so, Lord, as we give you our tithes and offerings this morning, we do so knowing that we can trust in you because you love us and you love your people. And I pray for those who give this morning, Lord, and let them know that what they do right now has eternal rewards because everything you do is for a soul. And so we love you, Lord. We thank you. No matter what surprises may come our way this year, we can always remain faithful in knowing that you are for us and that you love us. We love you, Lord. We thank you. We pray for all these things in Jesus' name. And we all said, amen. Amen. Way to go, Pastor Ben. How many? What is it? So all together, 80, 80 kids. Uh, whoa. How many? <laughs> five. Five. And that's five it. all together. <laughs> for Katie Ann, get six, eh? I, just, I'm, not say, I'm not saying anything. Just, just, just seeing if you're paying attention. But Happy New Year, everyone. Yes, God is multiplying families too. And when, when they told me they were having twins, I mean, first thing was, what? Like, how is this even possible? I know how it's possible, but I'm just thinking, just having, and they have three girls. So they're hoping for a boy, but they just really want, you know, their children to be healthy. So please pray for his wife, Katie Ann. Because if they don't have a boy, he's the only boy, which is Pastor Ben. And so, <laughs> so please pray for her. Katie Ann, I know you're, you might be in here somewhere. Okay, so we're praying for you, Katie Ann. God rest your soul. I don't know how you guys do it. I had two boys, and after that, we're like, we're done. And I, I, think, I think just with thinking of what we want to do in life, we always come to a place where, is this going to be good enough? Are we going to be able to, uh, will we be able to uh, work things out? You know, there's always those questions and when I think about the beginning of the year, what better way to start our year than beginning with God? 
And that's what we're going to talk about today because sometimes we begin with other things. We have, you know, New Year's resolutions. Uh, we have thoughts. We have vision for our life. And if you do have a New Year's resolution and you have kept it so far, you are among the elite because normally the resolutions are broken the very same week that you do the New Year's resolution. And so if you, if you do have one and you're keeping it, that's great. Uh, today, as we talk about beginning with God, the series that we're going to be in uh, is so that we would understand that our lives are in His hands. That's why we're entitling our series, My Life in God's Hands. Whoa. Excuse me. Excuse me. That's a shoulder. <laughs> What's up, McBrainy? Hi. Can you see Hi. me? Hi. Yes, I can. Hi, everyone. Where are you? Hi. What are you doing? Hi. Where are you coming? What is this? What are you doing? Oh, oh, the new year be without me stopping by to say hello. So hi and happy why you just, new year. Why don't you just come here instead of the video? Well, you know, I couldn't stop by in person, you know, uh, past security. And so I had to find another way to uh, hack in. You have security I mean, for a reason. Hack in, but get into your system and say hello and happy new year. Yeah, well, everybody yes, says hi. And because it's a new year, I was thinking maybe your message today could be something about new beginnings with God or yep. um, fresh starts with God or something, you know, along those lines of a new beginning. Beginning with yes. God. That's and, what we're doing. So, you know, all new beginnings must have new friendships. And so I've been making friends, Master Sheldon, you'd be so happy. But um, I made a friend and he said he could have met you before. So I'm going to have him come oh, in. Oh, baby, pretty. Yes, yes, come yeah. in. Come hey, in. Baby, Hi. You don't have to do this. Yeah, okay, okay. Uh, I met him doing? once. Hey, thanks for bringing me here, yeah? We're saying hi to Pastor Sheldon. Say hi to everybody. Hi. Who's there? What's up? Right there. We're through, she's hacking the through the video. What is this? Yes. Yes. Is that We're your the real teeth? Oh, it's your live stream. Is that your real yeah. teeth? Right on, live stream. Hey, yeah, right on, right on. Right on. You can see us. Yes, they can see us. Hey, how's it, Pastor Sheldon? Hi. Everybody else. Hey, happy teeth. new year. Yes. What is that? You know, it's all about yeah, new beginnings. Real. And so I was telling him that's what he should be speaking about today because yeah. it's a new year. Yeah, because in the new year, you do new things. And when you do new things, you know things. You saw what I just did? I'll <laughs> teach you something I never know. Brilliant. Okay, well, because I wasn't sure that? if that... No, see, in the new beginnings, you're going to have to formulate. You're going to have to do things new again. So you got to unlearn some stuff, and you're going to relearn some things. Okay. And when you, what do you say? What well, you doing? I don't I wasn't you sure if that, hey, the you know, one of the things project. that we're going to do today okay. is just encourage you to do something new. That's what okay. we're going to well, talk that's about. That's what a new beginning is. Exactly what you're saying, but it's okay. That's what a new beginning is. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's a, um, okay. So, uh, new beginnings, Pastor Sheldon, we just wanted to say hello and well, to hello. tell everybody hi mm -hmm. and happy new year. Yeah. And, happy oh, new what's year. What's going on? I, I can't. I can't. Hey, you're losing a signal. We're what's going on? What's going on? Pastor what's Sheldon? On? Hey, hey, it's good. Lose the signal. I'm going to put that tin foil over the wire. See the wire is going up to the roof. That's not accurate. Not a tin foil. Get the hanger on top of the roof. The hanger. This is it. Oh, you were here enough on your pen. The hanger. No, it doesn't. It's not part of the formula, Pastor Sheldon. Yeah, the tin foil. Wow. Okay. So, I don't know if you want to applaud them, but thank you. As we begin this new year, and as I was saying. We're going to learn about our lives being in the hands. No way. you got to be kidding me. Sheldon, just one more thing. Yes. You know, through all the struggles and trials and tribulations that people may go through, um, there's just one thing that we should always remember to persevere through all our... Like, yeah, that makes sense. What, what That's what we're going to do. Oh, I just want I put my formula on top. See, two plus two equals four. Okay. That's brilliant. That's very basic. Oh, that's, that's, Not everybody that's knew that. Good. So I just really quit. Just no give up when you start something new. Just no give up. Okay. Yeah, it's the main thing. Good I advice. Like that. That's actually yeah. very good. I, I just wanted to uh, fix your equation, eh? Yes. Really? Don't do that again, okay? <laughs> really? oh. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. Bye, Pastor Sheldon. See you. Bye. 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 Okay. Let's let's take out our notes and uh, or our church app and cut the cord on that whatever feed that is. And we're going to talk about our lives in the hands of God. The whole series is about us thinking from God's perspective. Because if we think from our perspective, then that's an end in itself. But if we think of life from God's perspective, now it opens up the possibilities. I mean, what would life look like if our lives were in the hands of God? And we, we lived that way. Like, would we be more confident? Would we trust God more? 
Would we be more fearful or would we be more uh, loving? Like what would happen if we could live every day knowing that our lives are in his hands or living in such a way that we put our lives in his hands? Now, when you, when you came in, you were given a bulletin, and, and I mentioned this uh, the, a couple weeks ago, that we're wanting to go more paperless because of our app and stewarding our finances better. And some people were asking, are we still going to have, you know, write-in notes? Yes, we will, because some people like using pen and paper, and that's fine. But it also helps us uh, with, with stewarding well what God has given to us. The other thing is we're doing the 21 days, four gauges, which is your spiritual gauge, physical gauge, emotional gauge, and your mental gauge, which is the way you think. And that is a way for us to kind of measure every day what is, where are we spiritually? Where are we emotionally? Uh, where are we with our physical health and our, our mental health, you know, the way we think? And are we thinking godly thoughts and good thoughts? Uh, we also have a worksheet if you want to pick one up. It's at our information center or at our resource center. And it's just a, a quick way for us to say, I, I want to begin the year with God. I want to do things well. I want to measure how I'm doing and, and see where I'm at in these different areas. And that's just a way, a systematic way for us to say, God, I, I want my life to be in your hands. I really want to live every day understanding that my life, when it's in your hands, is so much better than my life in my own or just leaving it up to chance. And when we do that, we allow God to do the greater things inside every single one of us. And so this year, being the first Sunday of the year, we want to begin with God. Because when the new year comes, so does New Year's resolutions or new thoughts or vision. And most of the times we begin, our, we begin thinking of new things with ourselves. We think of, okay, what do I want? What do I desire? What do I want my life to look like? What do I want 2019 to look like? So we begin with ourselves, but even that, we can only go so far because it's us. It's, it's contained within our own power, our own way of thinking. But in the beginning, everything started with God. Everything we see, everything that happens in our world, everything throughout history started, started and began with God. He was before the beginning. God always existed, so he has no beginning. We have a beginning. And because we have a beginning, we need to remember that life is not about us because it never began with us. Life is actually all about God because it all began with God. That's why in the first five words of the Bible, it says, in the beginning God created. You know who wrote that? A man by the name of Moses. Moses was not the first created human being. Think about it. I would, have, I would have thought that Adam, who was the first human being that was created, I would have thought that Adam would write a book, that Adam would say, oh, when I came to life, I saw God face to face, and everything was perfect. And then all of a sudden, when, when we disobeyed God, everything went bad. Like, I would think that Adam would write something. But Moses wrote this. Why? Because Moses had a purpose. Every single person had a purpose. And God has a, had a purpose for Moses. God had a purpose for Adam. And what Moses was doing is he was trying to, he was convincing the people that there is a God. And so he wrote the first five books of the Bible. They brought in a system in how to live in God's way. And because of that, now we have structure with the way God did everything. But because of sin and mankind, we want to do our own thing. We're always gravitating towards self. Every single time. It is going to always be about us. It takes a lot for us to be in a conversation not talking about ourselves. It takes a lot. Especially when people are giving stories of like battle wounds and scars and, oh yeah, when I was seventh grade, I broke my arm. Oh, that's nothing. And flip out of the truck. I broke my leg. Two legs. My, my, my arm was hanging off. was dangling. I'm sewing back myself. Oh, that's nothing. My leg got cut off. I put them back on. And just tape them with duct tape. Like it, it, it slowly escalates and we talk about, you know, our stories, which is fine, but it's just human nature for us to talk about ourselves. It takes a lot for us to start thinking about other people, especially when it comes to God. So in the beginning, God created. We have a beginning. God doesn't have a beginning. And what if we began this year not with what we wanted, not, not with me, but what if we began this year with God? See, when we discover that our lives are in the hands of God, that's the best place to begin, that it's in the hands of God. 
And when we understand that it's in the hands of God, we cut out a lot of mishaps and uh, mistakes that cost us years of, of, of trying to recuperate or trying to heal up. If, if we can understand that our lives are in the hands of God, then we, we avoid many unforeseen mistakes and even sin that wrecks our life for the future. We save a lot of time by understanding that our lives are in his hands and to begin everything with God, even every single day, begin with God. And so what we're going to look at is discovering how we can learn these three basic truths that as we implement these in our lives, as we begin this new year with God, that he's going to do something beyond what we could possibly do for ourselves. And here's the first truth that we got to understand, that our hope is in God. It's, it's just that simple. Our hope is in God. Our hope cannot be on circumstances. Our hope cannot be in the economy. Our hope cannot be in our, our, our pocketbook or our checking account. Our, our hope has to be in God. Why? Because God is faithful. God, God is not like the stock market that crashes one day and then escalates the next day. And then your hope now is good because everything is in money or having things. God says, no, no, I am, I am faithful throughout the ages. I never change. I am always good even when bad things happen. And so now our, our hope is in God because he can be trusted. Our hope must be in God rather than in happiness or peace of mind or clarity or even our family or money or what I do, or what we dream about, because those things will change over time. People will let us down, even in our very own families. We ourselves will let people down. But if our hope is in God, then he's the one that's going to sustain us. The Bible tells us in the book of Proverbs, and this is coming from a man who is very wealthy. His name is Solomon, and he wrote most of the book of Proverbs. He says this, trust in your money, and down you go. That's how he said it. I'm sure that's how he said it. But the godly flourish like leaves in spring. Yeah, when you trust in money, down you go. It's like money fluctuates. It, it, if, if everything is about money, then when we spend it and it's gone, so is our hope. Because everything was in money. Now, the, what the Bible is not saying is don't have money, don't save money, don't use money. It says when you put your trust in money, down you go. And we'll never find true happiness if it's in things that make us go down. And our purpose, if we look at what God is doing in every single one of our lives, our purpose has to do with each individual. That's why sometimes even in the beginning of the year, there's, there are best-selling books, seminars, conferences, movies, motivational podcasts or videos, and we gravitate towards that because we think that's where true happiness is going to come from. And because what they're trying to do is encourage us to look within ourselves, and we know that doesn't work. It only goes so far because we're limited. You see, if, if you want to know how something works that you've never seen before, like an invention or something, the best way is to either find the manual for it or the person who made it. That's the best way to find out how something works. If you're trying to find something that you need to put together and you don't ask the person who made it or the manual, then you're going to have a difficult time. And this happens many times over for myself, especially when we bought our first swing set for my children. And there are just, you know, a whole bunch of screws, nuts and bolts, and some poles and pipes and chains. And, I mean, how difficult is it to put a swing set together? It's just putting poles together and putting the chain with the seat so that they could swing. And then the little Q-tip thing that you go back and forth and the little rocking chair. Very simple. Five hours later, as we're snapping at each other and finished everything, you still have leftover screws and don't know where everything goes. And then when the kids play on it, it's like real crooked and everything. And, and like, what is missing? Then I go to the manual. And then I understand, oh, no wonder I miss, I'm missing some pipes. Where are the other pipes? And now that you go to the manual, you can see correctly from step one through 50 million what you're supposed to do. Yeah, you miss a step or two, you can kind of get away with it. But if you miss a couple steps that are very important, the whole swing set is now unstable. And now we, and we rig it up. We, you know, we put cement blocks on the side or we tie one rope to the tree or something. We try to make it work out, but that's not how it was created. 
And so now, without, without this manual, we, we put our hope into guessing how something is going to work. We put our hope into this looks like the picture, but in the end, it's, it's not as strong as it sh- that it could have been if we followed the directions. And so it is with our hope, when our hope is in God. It's like we're saying to God, you're my creator, so I'm going to go to you and go to your manual on how life should work so that I don't miss a step, so that I know how I'm supposed to live. Otherwise, I'm going to be guessing all my life, and I'm going to follow what other people are doing, what other people say, or how I feel. But God has already given us the manual for living. And when we get into his word, when we're listening to him, when we're following him, obeying him, our lives are in his hands, and that's the best place for our lives to be in. That's how God operates. He gave us a manual for living. Jeremiah chapter 17, verses 7 and 8, gives us God's blessing, and he says, here's how you be blessed. Blessed are those who trust in the Lord and have made the Lord their hope and confidence. They are like trees planted along a riverbank with roots that reach deep into the water, and such trees are not bothered by the heat or worried by long months of drought. Their leaves stay green, and they never stop producing fruit. Never stop producing fruit. Here in Hawaii, we don't have the luxury of seeing, you know, the different seasons come and go. We don't see summer, winter, spring, and fall with the changing of the leaves and the colors. Now, some trees, you know, the leaves will fall off, and and you you can see that, and we kind of know when when springtime is here. But if you go to certain places like the mainland, certain areas where the colors change and you see the fall colors, it's like the, the landscape changes, everything changes. And then when it comes springtime or that time or wintertime and, and leaves are falling and, and all the trees are barren, it almost looks like those trees are dead. Like they're not, they're, they're, they're not going to bear any fruit. There's, like, there's no life in them. But what we don't realize is that, is that the life is not in the leaves. The leaves and the fruit on the tree are a result of the roots going deep down into an ecosystem where it's being fed water or nutrients from the soil And what the Bible is telling us is that's how our life should be when it's in the hands of God. That our roots go deep down into God's hands. And so now he he nurtures us and he gives us the nutrients that are needed for our spirit and our life. And the result is our life will bear fruit. Our leaves will be green or our lives will have life to it rather than just a mundane living condition that we go out year after year after year. And then every year that comes around, it almost feels like, what, does it, did anything change? Did, did, I, did I do anything productive? Is my life different today than it was last year? We're going to go through all of those thoughts because our hope, if not in the Lord, leaves us to a dead end. It's just the end result because we don't have enough in us to make our lives what God sees we could be. And it's inside of us. We feel it. We sense it. Sometimes we say it in this way. We say, boy, I, I know I can do better. But what we, what we tend to do is we look back to self rather than God. Because it almost seems weak. Like, well, if I turn to God, then it seems like I don't know what I'm doing. Well, we don't know what we're doing. We, can, we only know so much. But when our confidence and our hope is in God, now, now our lives are limitless. There are many possibilities Colossians tells us in Colossians 1.16, for in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. Did you know that you and I were created not just by God, but for God? That's, your, that's our identity. You can write the second thing in, that our identity is in God. That's a truth that sometimes we forget. Our identity is in God. It's not in our career. Now, sometimes we'll identify with that. And when you meet someone new, sometimes that's the conversation. Like, oh, so where do you work? What do you do? And we equate that to our identity. And God says, that's not your identity. It's what you do here on this earth, but that's not your identity. Because it's not about us. In this book, and the reason why I brought this up is because I, 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 I'm reading this again. It's a really good book, and I, I talked about it some time ago. What on, what on earth am I here for? And it's at a resource center. It's a very easy read, and you go through, I think, 40, 42 days, 
And it's a simple way to remind us that life is not about us. It didn't begin with us. It began with God. And life is not about me. Everything is about God. And I'm glad that everything is about God because then he has better order and structure than I could ever have. He has a way better perspective than we could ever have. And he has, he has a greater power than we could ever possess. And because life is more about God than it is us, why not turn to him and have our identity in God? You know what the world does? The world paints a bad picture for people who believe in God. Because what society wants us to believe for those who believe in God is that you're a fanatic, that you're weak, that you're weird. We're weird without God. We don't, we don't need God in our lives to be weirder. We, I mean, everyone has their own personality. Everyone has their own likes and interests. So to some degree, people are going to be weird to us no matter what. But society wants us to think that when you, when you put your hope in God, something's wrong with you. That's what the world wants us to think. But God says, no, no, no. When you put your hope in me and your identity is in me, you're secured. See, we have this thing in our world called identity theft. This is a real thing. People can, and, and maybe you were a victim of this, people can steal our actual identity. In other words, it's not just credit card fraud, insurance fraud, or, or a scam of taking money from people. It's your whole identity where they become you. They steal everything from you. So now you no longer exist they have your identity. And so now, my identity in the world is stolen. They have my social security, and it's now their fingerprints, it's now their look, and they start with my identity. And they start their life fresh, and they do whatever they want, and then they switch another identity, throw that one away, and go on to the next. It's kind of a scary thought. My thought is, hey, so long you pay my bills. You pay my bills. <laughs> Joking. But from one person to the next, if our identity is in ourselves or in the world, it can be stolen. But there's one identity that cannot be stolen. It's secured by the blood of Jesus. It's our identity in God. In other words, who he says we are, no one can take that away from us. We're all uniquely made, specifically created for God. We're not created for this world. That's why we have heaven we're just passing through. We're going to spend eternity with God. He created us for him. He loves us that much that he wanted to spend eternity with us. And what happens is if we put our hope in other things and our identity is in things other than God, then we're basically starting at the wrong starting point. It's like if you're going to run a race and you just start wherever you want, you're disqualified. It won't even count. You've got to start at the starting point. And our starting point is with God, beginning with him. That's the best place to start. Because God is always faithful. Job, in the, in the Bible, a man by the name of Job, he struggled with some things. And he, had a, he, had, he went through some difficult things, but then in the end, it turned out okay. And in Job chapter 12, verse 10, it's, it's recorded this, that in his hand is the life of every creature and the breath of all mankind. This is the reason why we exist. We exist for God. It's because of God, and God made us to exist. He willed us to exist. We're made for him and by him, and when we understand that, then our life begins to make sense. If not, then life will be a mystery, and we'll never understand our life and our purpose. But when we begin with God and understand that my life and our lives are in his hands, that there is life now. Now there's happiness. Now there's joy. Now there's peace and strength. Because it all begins with God, and he's the source of all of that. But if it begins with us, then we go nowhere. It's a dead end. Romans 8, 6 tells us, so letting your sinful nature control your mind leads to death. In other words, that's the end of it. If we let our own sinful nature control us, and we go back to self, that's, that's as far as we go. But letting the spirit control your mind leads to life and peace. I'm sure we all would love to have some peace and even life. I'm sure there are days that we wake up and we're like, man, I don't, I don't like my life. I want it to be like this. I thought it would be like this. I didn't know it could be like this. 
But God says, hey, hey, turn to me because your identity is in me. Your identity is not in your circumstances or how you feel. Your identity is in me. I will give you life. I will give you a purpose. I will give you meaning. And I'm the one that's going to help you to have this peace because peace is not a feeling. Peace is a person. And that person is Jesus Christ. And God gives us a purpose, which you can write in your third point, that our purpose is in God. We have a purpose in God. He made us. He created us for him. He gives us a purpose. Sometimes we wonder, I wonder what my purpose is. Like, what is my purpose? Why am I here? Why am I on earth? The best, the best way to, to know our purpose is to ask God. Ask God what your purpose is rather than guessing or making something up. Because sometimes I think we'll guess what our purpose is and then make something up because we need some type of purpose. We put together like a life statement to say, this is my purpose. This is who I am. But ask God. He'll let you know. He'll give you what your purpose is. Because if, our, if we have our purpose and it's given by God, then we can live our life to its fullest. Every single one of us has a purpose. And if we don't live out that purpose the world loses out. When you create something, whatever you create is made for a specific purpose. We were made by God specifically for God, not the other way around. We were made by him and for him. I remember one of the first times I was at Heidi's house and we were building things. Her dad had a tool shed and we were pounding some nails and making some things and I only had to pound a nail in just a little bit to hang something up. So I didn't want to walk to the tool shed, and I had a wrench in my hand. So I turned the wrench around and just used the handle, and I started pounding in the nail. Her dad goes, hey, what are you doing? I said, well, I'm just putting in the nail. He goes, that's not what that wrench is for. I said, yeah, but I'm just putting it in. It's just simple. I'm just going to pound it in. He says, no, 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 no. Boy, you go to the shed, and you go get the hammer. That's what the hammer is for. And I, I mean, in my mind, I'm thinking, what's the, who cares? What's the big deal? But her dad was big, so I went to the tool shed, and I got the hammer, and then I pounded the nail in. I never understood, why can't I use the one with the handle? Why can't I use the handle of this? Or I use another tool. It's going to do the same thing. And then I got my own tools. And then my children would do the same thing. I mean, hey, no pound with the wrench. Why? Well, it's the same thing. No, no, no. You go in the shed and you go get the hammer. Oh, how come I got to get the hammer? Because Papa, your Papa said so. And so that's what it's made for. That's what it's created for. That's why every tool has its unique purpose. Every single person has their unique purpose. And when we're not used according to our purpose, oh, we may get away with certain things, but that's not why we were why we're why we were created. God created us for a specific reason with a specific purpose. And unless we fulfill that purpose, we're always going to feel empty. We're always going to feel like we're missing out. But God gave us a purpose. Matthew chapter 16 verse 25 tells us, for whoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will Find it. Here's why. Because if we're trying to make up our own purpose and we just, we use our life for what it's not intended for, we lose life. But God says, I have a purpose for you. So if you, if, if you do what my purpose is, that's where you're going to find life. Not just making stuff up. It's living for me. There's a reason why I created you. You see, the wisdom of this world only goes so far. It will never bring out the best in us. Only God can bring out the best in us. His ways is always the best way. That's why at this time of year, many self-help books, videos, seminars, they all do well because we think that success starts with self. Then did you know that you can actually succeed in the eyes of the world without having God in your life and fulfilling his purpose? Many people do that. Many people, they, they succeed in the eyes of the world, never fulfilling their purpose and never having God in their life. And in the end, they realize it. Every single person. Because if we don't fulfill our purpose, and if our life is not in God's hands, we will always come up short of what we could have been. And we end up at a dead end every single time. Ask God what your purpose is. That's how we discover 
what our purpose is. Why do we ask God? Because he created us. He's the creator. He's the inventor of us. And so we go to him to understand how we're made and how something works. And either we're going to make something up, guess, or let other people tell us who we should be. But I, I believe we can turn to God and we're going to turn to God. We're beginning with God so that he can reveal it to us. You know, throughout the whole entire Bible, men and women tried to find their purpose without God. But when they turned their life to God and they followed his ways, God revealed to them their purpose. It's called revelation. A whole book is written because God revealed himself to mankind. It's revelation from God and who we get to be for him. Because if you want to know the purpose of something, go ask the person who made it. Ask your children. Remember our children? Well, some still do. They'll come up to us and say, look at, look at what I made for you. And you got to be careful how you answer that because you might say things like, oh, that's so good. Do I put my coffee on it? No, it's to hang your shoes. And like they get mad at you because you didn't know what it was. So what we should do is when our children say, hey, look what I made for you. Oh, that's beautiful. What does it do? What is, tell mommy, daddy, what, is, what does it do? Tell us, what does it do? Oh, it's so that you can hang your shoes. Oh, this is wonderful. But we ask them what it is because we don't know. Sometimes they'll bring a stick. I made this for you. Really? What is this for? It's to go fishing. It's like, ah, oh, so cool. No even one real. Like, and, but to them, it's the, it's the greatest thing because they did something for us. But you ask the person because we don't know. And so it is when we go to God. He knows our purpose. Our purpose is in him. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 7 tells us, no, we, we declare God's wisdom, which is a, a mystery that has been hidden and that God destined for our glory before time began. In other words, we don't operate on the wisdom of the world. We really operate on the wisdom of God. And even before the world began, God destined us for glory, success, a purpose life. And it, it's all in him because God is a source of life. He's not just the creator of it. He sustains us. Therefore, it would be wise to begin with God. Just begin every day with God. Begin, begin your thoughts with God. Uh, even, even if you're just pondering on things and you're thinking of, uh, let's just say it's for you and your family, and you're thinking, maybe we should do this or vacation or plan this or save for this. Just start with God and say, God, can you give us wisdom for this? Pray together as a family. Whatever it takes to begin with God. Begin the morning with God. Just pray to God before you start your day because the day comes by so fast. Like the moment, some of us, we shoot out of bed. And go, oh, what time is it? Oh my goodness, we're late. Brush teeth for like seven seconds. Oh, I never get the back. That's okay, I'm chew gum. And then we just head out the door and then we don't even think about God until some type of catastrophe or something is heavy on our hearts and we're saying, oh, we don't know what to do. God, help me. And it's like for the first five hours of the day, we never even thought about God. But first thing in the morning, make it a habit to begin the day with God. Some people do their devotions early in the morning. They begin that way. Some people with prayer. Some people do devotions or, or spending time with God in the evening. And the book that uh, Kimo was talking about, The Divine Mentor, best book I've read on how to do devotions. It's just an easy, systematic way of hearing God reading the Bible. And if you've ever doubted God's voice, get into the Bible. He'll speak it loud and clear. Now, there are going to be many things you don't understand just like life, but we don't throw, out the, we don't throw, in, uh, you know, throw in the towel because we don't understand. Our, our, our children, as they're growing up, they don't understand everything. They're learning as they grow. And the same as us. Give yourself some grace when you're reading the Bible and you're reading and you're saying, I don't understand what is happening right now. Well, whatever you do understand, then you, you journal about that. Whatever you understand, because then God will add a little bit here, a little bit there. And as we learn throughout the years reading the Bible, then he's gonna, his voice is going to be clearer and clearer every single opportunity we find ourselves in the word of God. And make that a point. Start every day with God. Even taking a moment to pray. Just pause a little bit, pray. Even if your heart is racing and it's five or ten seconds. Just calm yourself, and if you shoot out of bed, just stop and say, okay, God, I want to start the day with you. I pray the armor of God. It's in Ephesians chapter 6, and I just go through six pieces of armor. And I, I simply say, God, 
I put on the belt of truth. I shod my feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. I put on the breastplate of righteousness and the helmet of salvation. I take up the shield of faith and the sword of the spirit, which is your word. It's a simple prayer, but I visually put on the armor of God so that I'm ready for the day. And if you do that every single day, just start the day with God, you're beginning with God. And you're going to miss some opportunities, but that's okay. You get back on track and then go back because we're destined for, for the glory of God. And God, God declared that before even time began, before he even made us. And he gave us his word. It's his wisdom, his ways, and it's his wonderful plan that fuels our purpose. He will fuel us and strengthen us. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 11 and 12 tells us, In him we were also chosen, having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will, in order that we, who were the first to put our hope in Christ, might be for the praise of his glory. In other words, when we're living out in the purpose that God made for us, God is glorified. I think we all want to live in such a way that people see our lives and they say, wow, God is a good God. He's so good. And the purpose of our life and the impact that it makes in this world is way bigger than us. This is why we need to begin with God. It's our life in His hands that brings life, happiness, peace, and joy. And I want to end with this, and you may have heard this before, but it's, it's just a way for us to really think about when our lives are in the hands of God. And when our lives are in the hands of God, it changes not just the value of our life, but it changes the value of how we believe in things and, and our purpose and how we live every single day. Now, I love basketball. I love watching basketball. I think it's a great sport. You learn a lot uh, just with basketball. But you put a basketball in my hands, it's worth what the basketball is, about 20 to $30, a good basketball even more. But you put, you put the same basketball in the hands of LeBron James, now you're talking $35 million a year. It depends on whose hands it's in. You put a baseball in my hands, it's worth about $8. But you put that same baseball in the hands of someone like Alex Rodriguez, now you're talking $20 million a year. It all depends on whose hands it's in. You put a tennis racket in my hands, it's a good fly swatter. That's about it. But you put the same tennis racket in the hands of like Serena Williams and you have 23 Grand Slam championship titles. It all depends on whose hands you put that racket in. You put a golf club in my hands, that's all you have is a golf club worth 75 to maybe $150. You take that same golf club and you put it in the hands of Tiger Woods, now you're talking $50 million a year. It all depends on whose hands it's in. In the Bible, you read about this little boy who had two fish and five loaves of bread. You put that in my hands, I'll make you a couple of sandwiches. But you put that in the hands of Jesus, you have a miracle of feeding over 10,000 people. It all depends on whose hands it's in. Give me a couple of nails and I can maybe build something. But you put those nails in the hands of Jesus and a nail through his feet. You have salvation for the entire human population past, present, and future. It all depends on whose hands it's in. You take our lives, you put it in our hands. We're limited at best. You take the same life and you put it in the hands of God. Unlimited potential. It all depends on whose hands our lives are in. Let's put our hands, our lives in the hands of God. Let's begin with God this year and watch what he does. He is unbelievable with releasing our potential. Amen. Let's bow our heads together as we pray.
Lord, thank you for not just reminding us on, on, on how great you are and, and the power that you have, but we make a decision today to put our lives in your hands that we, we want to begin with you. We're beginning the year with you in, th in this way together. It's our first Sunday as a, a, a church body because our identity is in you. That's, that's where we want our identity to be because you know our purpose. You've given all of us a purpose and it all starts with you. We cannot start with self. We've got to start with you. You are the beginning. You are the end. And so could you just solidify in our hearts everything that we're learning so that we could become the people that you see us to be? We put our hope in you. We trust you. We thank you that our identity is in you, that no one can steal away. And we thank you that our purpose is in you. We were created by you. We were created for you. And we thank you that we have that great of a purpose in this world. I pray for all of us, for our families, our marriages, our loved ones, our parents, in the season that we're in, that you would strengthen us, Lord. We need your spirit. We need your comfort and your power to do the things that you see us to do, to fulfill our God-given purpose. And I pray that over all of us today, and as we leave here today, may we never forget that our lives are in your hands. We pray this in Jesus' name, and we all said together, Amen. Amen. God is a good God. He's so good to us. Yes, he is.